all, why are you here? Uh, today's a test day. Last couple days we've been testing. Uh, just, you know, we've got a new car this year. We have the Mazda RX-8, and uh, Stokes is our sponsor on that, so we're getting the car, you know, testing some things on it, getting used to it. And the uh, more track time I get, the better it is. I can get a little faster each day. And it's nice this is a pretty a low-pressure situation, so we can go out and uh, experiment with some different things, get used to the car. And, and for me, just to really, the more seat time I get, the faster I get. And some coaching from uh, Joe here, it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun so far. And, uh, how important and preparing for the Rolex 24-hour uh, right. race. Well, I think for endurance racing, it's one of the big ones. I think there's Sebring, certainly, and Le Mans, and, uh, and Daytona 24 Hours is something that's always been a goal for us as a team here at Hypersport. And, uh, you know, uh, we're very excited to, to go after it this year, and hopefully we have a good finish. We're, our goal is to get in the top ten. If we could do that, we'd be very happy. When did interest in racing started to cross your mind? Oh, I think... Uh, so, when I was a little little boy, certainly we'd always watch the the, the, the Daytona, uh, you know, the 500 here and, and all the races that were there, Indy, all that stuff. Uh, since I was a kid, and then just got involved with a Skippy Barber one time, and then um, went to the Pano School in uh, Atlanta, where I met Joe Foster, the head instructor there, and uh, just started going through those programs and got more and more addicted to the sport and uh, I really love it. I like the guys that are around it and also the women drivers that are around it are a lot of fun and the camaraderie and the challenge mentally and physically and uh, it's a great sport. I really have a great time. Um, it's, it's always challenging. What's the difference between preparing for a race and preparing for a movie or a role or... Well, certainly physically it's a big, it's a, there's a huge difference and mentally it's, there are a lot of similarities oddly enough uh, that I think the, the acting and the, all of that helps prepare me for this mentally to stay strong and things like that. So it's, it's a nice balance for the, the two. This is nice to come and do this and then I go back to work uh, refreshed and, and happy to be there. Do you have any reaction from the other drivers, you know, the actors out here or anything like that? They, yeah, they have a good time with making fun of me, but that's all right. They've been really, uh, actually, incredibly supportive and very kind to me, and I, I can't thank them enough. Uh, the whole series, I mean, the uh, Rolex and Grand Am, we ran Coney Challenge last year, and actually second in the championship the team, and uh, Joe was second in the driver's championship. So we've done really well, and I think we're, along with uh, just being there at every race, we're certainly uh, developing some respect from other drivers and other teams, and that's really, at the end of the day, what we want. Is this your first race or no? Uh, no, this is not my first race. I've done uh, a handful of Coney Challenge races, and we did a race at Miller this year and finished 10th for this car. That was our first race, and then uh, uh, we'll see how we do this season. Tell us a little bit about the team. Racing. Joe, go ahead. You bring it in there. Joe's a principal. We partners in the team. We met uh, several years ago, like I said, at the, oh, at the Petit Le Mans. Actually, they were driving a, a Pano Esperante. And um, now we've been, we've got five or six cars now. How many cars have we got? Well, we've got a shop full of cars. Patrick's been involved with the team since um, 2004, 2005 time frame, and uh, it's grown a lot. We've become very competitive. Part of your question was the credibility Patrick has with other drivers, and part of that is the fact that Patrick's become involved in the sport as a business and uh, as a credible business and also and is working very diligently uh, from the team side as well as the driving side and the business side to support the whole industry, not just uh, himself or his involvement in it. And so that's given him a lot of credibility with the other drivers. Can we get your name? Joe Foster. Can and name uh, it's called Hypersport. And, and, you know, when you guys met and you started discussing the fact that he wanted to race, what went through your mind? Where, I mean, well, we, we struck up a, a friendship, uh, like I said, when I was driving for another team, and he uh, came to an event as a fan and an enthusiast who was wanting to get involved, and then uh, we eventually struck up an instructor relationship where I helped coach and, and help, uh, you know, and indoctrinate him a little bit in, uh, in in how to drive. And he, and really on his own as a talented athlete, uh, you know, picked it up. And so it hasn't been rocket science for us to get in quick, and, and uh, he is now definitely uh, quick and is credible, and we're definitely looking forward to doing uh, you know, doing well in this race. In the in the RX-8. How good is he? Oh, he's very good. If you he's look, the fact that he's right in front of him. No, no, he's very good. If <laughs> you look, pressure. this is like any uh, challenging activity. It requires practice to get good and to become competent, and then you've got to continually practice to maintain your competence. And with his other job, uh, it's very challenging to to allow him to have that continual practice, that continual uh, reinforcement. And so, given the amount that he is allowed to participate, um, he's outstanding. I mean, there are, are guys that he's, you know, he's regularly ahead of now that get to drive a lot more than he does. So, no problem there. How do you balance 
I mean, right now, I, I guess because of the strike, it gives you more little opportunity to. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, on one hand, it's a, it's, it's really uh, upsetting that the strike is just uh, in the position it's in right now. It doesn't seem like it's going to be resolved too quickly. So that's upsetting on one level. But on another level, it's nice to have some time off where I can actually finally have the time to train properly and test, uh, uh, which I haven't had time to do. Usually, I'm flying in race day, getting in the car and having to go out and and, and do my testing during a race, which is not that much fun and a little difficult. So now, as long as we have a clear idea what to do, we have our goals, and if we can reach those, uh, I'm very happy. And like this week, uh, these last couple of days have been a great opportunity for us to come along and just improve. And, and to balance it out is very tricky, certainly with the career and family and, and the kids and everything. It, it's, a, it's a bit of a, a difficult thing at times to, to find enough time to do everything properly. And to stay centered, not be too, uh, you know, exhausted. Everybody wants to know. Dr. Gray wants to be exclusive. <laughs> uh, I think this week's episode, um, a lot of things come to a head, and um, it's really interesting because it's the last episode we shot before the strike, and we don't have any more in the can, so I don't know where it's going to go after this episode, and uh, there's a couple of things that could happen, so it's going to be uh, interesting to see what people think, what happens Thursday night. But that question gets answered. On Thursday. So On we Thursday. have to wait for not on Fox, on ABC, actually. <laughs> we haven't gone there. you like that. Something people don't know about you. I mean, a lot of people don't know that you like to race. Yeah, I really love racing, the camaraderie. And, you, you know, you really can't do it out with support. With uh, You have to have support. And, and our sponsors have been phenomenal. I, I, uh, I do the voice for Mazda, the commercials. And Mazda, uh, we have a, a great deal with them. And they've been incredibly supportive for developing me as a driver. And I'm very thankful for that. And of course, Sobe, Lifewater has been there as well. So we're, we're happy and couldn't do it without them. And the Rolex Series has been really, really generous with their time and their support uh, with me coming in, and, uh, and, and it's been a lot of fun, so i got to thank them, and just like to have a good time, really have a good time, and I think if people want to get into racing, they should definitely go and do a Skippy Barber uh, competition weekend, that's a very way to do it, and their series is a really good way to bring people along racing, and uh, it's a lot less expensive than going out and buying a car, and it's a good way to get the skills to go do it, and then come out and have fun, it's a great sport. So who's going to win the Rolex 24 in January? That's a good question. We'll see. We'll see. We'd like to be in the top ten. <laughs> Thank you very much. We really appreciate it.